Hello everybody, this is Blade Cross EXE, and welcome to Fake Grand Order's 2020 Valentine's event. Alright, uh, gonna go ahead and say this one, I did not finish the Oni Pagoda event. By the time I get this video up, I might have a couple of those up already, but I didn't get finished with it. I got all the way up to floor 180. That was the last one I could do, I literally ran the clock out. I was at a convention this past weekend, and they just happened to schedule the event during the con, and for a good chunk of the convention, I was actually recording the episodes on my phone, so, uh, that, I just couldn't get, couldn't get finished. I got done what I could, and it was a big slog of an event. As far as I know, it does not have a rerun. And honestly, I don't want it to. I didn't like that event. But so, let's, uh, move on to Sammy Ramis's event over here. Prologue, The Girl and, The Girl in Love and Chocolates. Valentine 2020, the bountiful chocolate gardens of Valentine. The girl in love and chocolates. So where are we right now? Because Chaldea is so destroyed. Are we just going to ignore that until it's time for the Lost Belt event? Or, uh, Lost Belt chapter? Valentine's Day, a day of battle that happens once a year. But this time the battle began well in advance of the day itself. It began the moment they decided to communicate their feelings with chocolate, the moment they made chocolate the vessel of their wishes. For some, it began a year ago, and when they shed tears over the chocolates, they could not muster the courage to give. And now, one girl prepares to step into the battlefield. Really, if we get right down to it, this is where it all started. Don't get the wrong idea, though. This girl shouldn't be criticized. She did nothing wrong. She only did what any girl in love would do. That's right. Things just happen to unfold that way, as naturally as the numbers 2 and 3 follow 1. Of course, for the moment, no one knows that this is the beginning. No one could have anticipated this girl's ordinary actions would lead Chaldea into a great crisis. Again, Chaldea is gone! <laughs> Did you not follow the story mode? Oh no, 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 no! I love you! Now then, what kind of chocolate read me, should I get mastered this year? That's one thing I don't get about... Like, I mean, I, I can't read kanji. I can't read Japanese, so a lot of these these jokes go over my head. I see another effort myself in a ribbon and nothing else. Presenting myself as 100% Kyohime chocolate was taking it a bit far. Though there could be no more fitting ch uh, chocolate to demonstrate my love for Master. It was pointed out that my gift was difficult to eat. I knew they weren't lying, so that was acceptable. I suppose I should be more mindful of the recipient. Hmm. Then, what about this year? What should I put in... What percentage of me should I put in? <laughs> Planning something like this is fun. I hope you look forward to it, Master. Uh, I just felt the most dreadful chill. Foo! Oh, that's right. No matter what I end up making, the first step must be to purchase the base ingredient. Cooking chocolate. The commissary is always swamped this time of year, and of course, one must strike while the love is hot. Commissary. While hastily opening up a verse. Hello, I would like to I like some servant specialty plain chocolate, please. Oh, it's closed. And what's this note? Let's see. Notes regarding servant specialty plain chocolate. The Caldea Commissary has always offered chocolate made from divine cocoa and capable of enduring the magical energy inherent to the cooking process of most servants. Jaguar Warrior normally provides us with the cocoa in exchange for Jaguar stamps. However, we received the following notice from Madame Jaguar yesterday. Nope, forget it. Can't do it. I can't get cocoa anymore. Oopsie. And we are thus regrettably unable to procure a shipment of the product at this time. We apologize for the inconvenience. Madame Jaguar's response can be found below. It's not my fault. Sure, perhaps they're, they found out that I kept going into Tezka's territory to smuggle the stuff back here. But even then, it's still not my fault. This is repeated several times. Oh, Kyohime is mad. What the heck? This, this is a crisis. No normal chocolates can withstand my burning desires and cooking methods. 
Specifically, I wouldn't be able to blend it with my miraculous elixir of love. And while I'm sure everyone else is on the same boat, I suppose that these chocolates require something special to make it possible for them to survive being handled by heroic spirits. Yes, so I need to find a replacement, and quickly! I must find a special chocolate, or special cocoa beans that can be used to make such chocolate. She's about to reshift back to back to Babylonia, ain't she? Nothing. Nothing. There's absolutely nothing. Oh my, I looked everywhere and found nothing. Oh, are you in some sort of trouble? You can confide in me. My apologies. I failed to introduce myself. I am a completely trustworthy trader wandering the desert merchant. I'm still not sure who exactly you are, but traveling merchant is a godsend to me. You see, there's something I'm searching for. So here's what I need. Would you happen to sell such a thing? Hmm. Sorry, unfortunately, I do not care specialty chocolate or cocoa beans of that sort. I see. But, but, I, I may know where you could acquire such delicacies. Really? If you're lying, my vengeance will be terrible. But if you speak the truth, I will reward you greatly. Oh, I assure you it's true. If you continue on, you'll find a place... Well, a floating place. Oh, that's how it happened. She came across Semiramis' floating gardens of Babylon. Or hanging gardens, rather. Oh my, I never imagined that would be such a giant floating garden. How curious. However, even with the power of love, I can easily infiltrate this place no matter how high up it may be. After all, they say that distance is no obstacle for love. Well, why should altitude be any different? Oh, I wasn't expecting visitors. Hmm? Assassin of Red. My apologies, are you the owner of this place? Are you kidding me? If the Hanging Gardens of Babylon are not mine, then who, whose else would they be? I see. This place looks like the genuine article, like a confection shop run by an owner who has a proper education in their craft. I have a good feeling about this. I'm here because I heard this place may have a chocolate that could withstand my cooking and preparation techniques employed by servants. Is that true? Chocolate, you say? Do you have any? Of course I do. Oh! That's actually a stupid question. Haven't you noticed? What, what do you suppose that thing ne next to the throne is? A giant chocolate fountain. Oh my! That looks like a chocolate fountain! All I could say is, wow. Obviously, this garden's sole purpose is creating chocolate. Well, for the time being, at least. Well, I'm convinced. May I have some then? I'll pay a fair price, of course. Come, come now. Please, hand it over. I searched everywhere for this. I cannot wait any longer. I'm so excited to fear that the fires of my love may burst forth. Don't get too close. It's hot. It's sweltering. Stop right there. Come any closer and I'll kill you. Oh, sorry. How careless of me. Even for the sake of love, I should not have allowed myself to forget my manners. At any rate, gimme! <laughs> you certainly are fearless, making such bold demands of an empress. Well, I'm not called Hime for nothing, and the power of love makes me invincible. Oh? Fine. Your moronic insolence amuses me. I may consider being generous and gracing you with some of my chocolate. But I suppose the compensation is in order. Not money, though. Labor will be more appropriate. What do you mean by labor? And much as I hate to admit this, I was actually starting to reach I was actually starting to reach a limit to the to reach the limit of the chocolate production on my own. You, therefore, will help me. But you alone will not suffice. I permit you to bring others you trust to assist. When you have done that, we will speak more. So that's what happened. And that's the reason why I brought you, my most trusted person, uh, my dear Ankin here. I don't understand, but okay. Hmm. So you brought along a rather dull-looking boy. I suppose I can say you brought someone who at least appears to lack the capacity for scheming. Well, well, this is a surprise. The Hanging Gardens of Babylon, the noble phantasm of the world's earliest poisoner. Yes, and that poisoner is the Empress of Ancient Assyria, Semiramis. Oh, you know my name. Yeah, I watched Apocrypha. Well, as famous and illustrious as I am, my noble phantasm story and such were obviously 
would obviously be very widely known to future generations. That is the price one pays for one's fame. It does not trouble me. So, Chaldea, you say? What other things do you know? Hmm, only what legend tells us. Ah, but I do know that you're normal phantasm's limitation, too. Namely, that it cannot be operating unless it uses soil and stone from your homeland. It's this a strict limitation for sure, but because of that, it appears to be a very powerful noble phantasm. Yes, and it is an incredible flying fortress and so imposing, it means that the very ground you stand upon is actually her noble phantasm, senpai. I knew that. Of course my master knew. So knowledgeable. My love for you only grows. I allowed Gabriel to go because Kiyohime said she didn't sense any hostility. But had I known that it was Empress Semiramis, I may not have permitted it. Oh? As I welcomed you personally and gave you a rather fav the r rare favor of an audience. Are you busier worrying about being poisoned than appreciated appreciating your good fortune? How annoying. Right back at you, Empress Semiramis. As I said, we know all about you, especially about your wickedness. Armed with that knowledge, if we weren't cautious, we would be precisely the fools that y you most despise. Hmm, how can any of you? But you have a point. Had you approached me blindly without asking, or without any knowledge of me, I would have torn you apart limb from limb. But if your caution arises from your awareness of how terrifying I am, then I'll permit it. Nonetheless, you have no reason to be concerned this time. Had I intended to kill you, I would have done so the moment you arrived. After all, I have plenty of time to activate my Tiamtum Umu. Heh, <laughs> Umu! Even before you set foot in here. My purpose is simple. I merely wanted to make chocolate. To make as much as I can to the very highest quality. That is the earnest wish of the floating garden. So what Ki Kiyohime said was true. Um, if I may ask, for what purpose? My counsel is mine to keep. Do mere subjects need to understand the workings of their emperor's mind? I think not. Even inquiring into such thing uh, should be criminal. Neither ask nor concern yourself with that. As my subjects, you need only obey. When did I become a subject of yours? I don't recall that happening. I will ask the questions here. Will you help me or will you not? If you assist me, then I'll sell you some of the final product. I guarantee... The chocolate will be of the very highest quality. Cool, sweet, bitter, and rich. The most delicious treat to be sure. Chocolate seeps into the very depths of the human body, and at times can become something quite lethal. All of this is to say that chocolate is a form of poison. And so, as the original poisoner, I could never make chocolate of anything but the highest quality. Master? <clears throat> Gabriel? Just a quick reminder that Chaldea will not be receiving the usual cocoa shipment this year. Chocolates are a luxury item, so it wouldn't be the end of the world if we didn't get any. I personally resolved to give cookies as a gift this year, but I'm sure there will be others who are not so understanding and adaptable. Particularly the young lady hovering so earnestly at your side. Well, it's really up to you, Gabriel. I'll leave it to the judgment of the Master. <sighs> Can't have a Valentine's Day without chocolate. That's my Master. Are you doing it all for me? Ah, uh, this is definitely uh, all in the name of love. Hmm. A just conclusion. You were dreadfully slow at answer, though. Even my dove familiar could have made a swifter response. Now that they've agreed to help out, what do you need them to do? I'm going to make the chocolate production facility on this floating garden. You will be my laborers. This entire garden is my territory. I can change it however I wish. But to, but to do or make anything, I re will require materials with which to work. Your task will be to help me collect these materials for the creation of my product production facility. I will then leave the work and task management to you. I see. The only resource I have in this floating garden is the special cocoa tree, and is the crucial ingredient for this chocolate fountain, but... This is still not enough. I need so much more, and I will also need more knowledge and experience to develop new production methods. Did you start off by growing the cocoa tree? Like I said, the floating garden is my territory. How foolish are you to believe that the time it takes to grow and harvest something will be here for me the same as in the outside world? Well, whatever it is, I'll work my hardest to help you. Please, ask anything, Master. 
<laughs> what a good fortune to have a collabor collaborative venture like this. I never thought we would find chocolate, the crystallization of our love here of all places. I now know that my gift this year will turn out splendidly. Gabriel, was it? I will accept nothing short of selfless diligence on your part. Do not forget the honor bestowed upon you. I will not permit you to think of this as a part-time job or to do your work half-heartedly. Devote yourself to aiding me as if you were dedicating your life to my service. Understood? Now, I don't know about my life. You hesitate. Is the honor of serving me insufficient? Do you require further incentive? Sorry, Semi Ramis, not to rain on your parade, but the adaptation of Apocrypha wasn't the best, so I don't know a lot about you or your motivations outside fighting alongside Amakusa. So, if I knew a little more about you, I might have a higher opinion of you. Normally, the reward for such greed in my court is a sweet death. But I'm nothing if not ma magnum mag magnanimous. I can never pronounce that word right. I will offer you a potion of great import. Uh, you will not complain in that case. A potion. A position of great import. Sorry. I was thinking poison because she, because it... Never mind. I will offer you a position of great import. You will not complain in that case, will you? Good. Then I shall temporarily appoint you as my special chocolate production minister here within my floating garden. You shall serve as my second in command for this monumentally important task of chocolate production. A magnificent honor, don't you think? The future of Chaldea sweets and candy is in my hands. I feel all she did was give him a very clear definition of her hierarchy. Right. And when you give a subject status uh, and prestige, they are more motivated to work harder. I will send out my Dove familiar to continuously monitor your work and also gather information about the current state of production. Know that my eyes will always be upon you. Do not even think about cutting corners. Now go, Gabriel. You push over. Relish the joy of being in my service. I devote your body and mind to work. Your work will grant you the privilege of watching this floating garden become a chocolate paradise. Huh. Help make hanging gardens of chocolate. Okay. Okay, so it looks like this is going to be pretty much the same as it was last year. Uh, so basically, not really going to show much of the grinding unless there's a big challenge quest, but I will be doing the cutscenes for all of the chocolates and exchange gifts. Event items. Develop new facilities to make new chocolates. Okay. Okay. Well, this is certainly going to be an interesting event. So let's see how this goes.